Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to this Monday edition of For FSC Weather. I'm student meteorologist Troy Fields. And I'm student meteorologist Tyler Allender. We're now four days into November, and we're all uh, smiling big after that smiling. big hurricane win. Yes, yeah, great No indeed. longer a hurricane warning in Tallahassee. Hopefully no hurricanes in the future, but how'd you feel about that time change yesterday, Tyler? I mean, I, I like the fact that you get the extra hour, but I still feel tired, and I still feel, I don't like that it gets dark early now. Same so. here, but uh, get some sleep after the show, Tyler, because you can definitely use it. But, but <laughs> anyways, we're going to shift things into the northeast where it's going to be a big warm-up in the future. Yeah, they, but they saw some really cold temperatures this morning, right? Yes, and we have some statistics for you in Saranac Lake in New York, which is located in the Adirondack Mountains. Guess what the world temperature was, Tyler? Hmm, uh, 10 degrees? Close. 7 degrees. Wow. Pretty bone chilling there. How close was that to... You're from New York, right? Yes. How close is that to where you're from? Uh, it was about two and a half hours. Okay. From, I'm from Corning, New York, so... So little, probably even colder up there? Definitely, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> All definitely right, so indeed. cold stuff is coming, and then the warm-up the warm up is on the way as well, and temperatures will be warming up how much? Uh, 5 to 10 degrees above where they were earlier this morning, and even 30, degree, 30 to 40 degrees above where they were this time yesterday. So really, in all, a big work up in store for the east coast of the United States. I'm sure they shouldn't get used to it because winter is coming. But let's go ahead and see where winter is right now with Jay. Thanks, guys. Now we look <laughs> at our first national today. As, as we comes up, we see that nice little cold front coming in that's bringing a lot of, um, definitely a lot of thunderstorms, and hopefully they are ready and prepared for that. And we go back now to our local, and as it comes up slowly, as again, we see that um, the thunderstorms coming in, make sure you're prepared. It's bringing a lot of rain, and that will start making its way to Tallahassee later on throughout the week. And we go into the future cast. That um, uh, future cast will show lots of wind, because again, because that cold front is bringing lots of wind, so make sure you have nothing loose that could blow off easily in the wind. And when we set this to the weather headlines for today, it's cool starting the week, so I know you felt that early this morning. Showers in the midweek and seasonal conditions for that fall weather later on Friday into Saturday. Let's send it back up to the desk. Thanks, Jay. And we just mentioned a moment ago about winter just around the corner, and there are a few ways that our body kind of tries to fight off the cold. Yes, and one of those ways that your body fights off the cold is energy expenditure and what that means folks is that your body spreads energy levels so then when it gets really cold your nat your body naturally tries to fight off the heat yes and then next we have blood flow reduces it puts a lot more strain on those blood vessels and the heart and so it's um, it, the body works a whole lot harder mm -hmm. than it should yes and that's especially true as going into the winter a lot of places will get cold and the final thing that your body does to stay warm to the battle off this cold weather is it starts to shiver and you think that shiver is bad but actually what it does is that it, your body generates heat you know to keep itself warm so yeah it's just like when it's hot we sweat to keep cool so this is kind of the opposite effect but let's go ahead and take a look at our local forecast haven't seen clay for a while on the show welcome back clay Thanks so much. It's definitely great to be back. I'm going to have you start seeing me a lot more of me here as time keeps going on. I want to start things showing off by showing you a, fi a live feed of St. George Island. Not really any beachgoers now as the day starts coming to a close. 71 degrees is pretty nice out there. What I really want you to take notice of is the cloud cover that we've had. And really, you, if you were anywhere in the Tallahassee region, any of the Panhandle region, you could really notice that cloud cover all throughout the area as a result of the moisture that's coming off of the Atlantic in the East Coast. We'll show the visible satellite again. Nothing really going in our area in terms of rain, but however, we look off towards the east, you can really see that kind of cloud cover making its way, moving into the area off of the moisture coming out of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and really and truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a pop-up shower or two for our neighbors to the far east, but it's nothing that I really wouldn't count on until towards the end of the week. As, uh, today's the temperatures were about 75 degrees. That's pretty normal, pretty seasonable as we get into the beginning of November here. Our low is about 52 degrees this morning. That's right about average, only one degree off actually of 51 for our seasonal average today, November 4th. Right now, though, as you're sitting down for dinner, temperatures are 71 degrees at the Tallahassee Airport. The dew, for, dew point is 53 degrees, putting that humidity right at 53 percent. 
So it's pretty comfortable out there, not really any terms of humidity at all. We'll spread it out and look at temperatures across the area. It's 71 in Tallahassee, 66 in Quincy, 70 up in Bainbridge, and 71 degrees down in Apalachicola. Pretty much a uniform uh, temperature span as we look throughout the area. I think we're going to see that going on throughout the rest of the week until we get to the end of the week when we start talking about temperature changes, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Our wind speeds have started to die down. If you were out there today, you noticed it was a little breezy. I wouldn't necessarily call it windy. It was uh, you noticed it, let's just say that, and uh, if you really, it's not really that type of wind that's going to cut through, through you and chill you to the bone. Only nine miles an hour coming out of the east in Tallahassee. Our satellite and radar composite screen really shows, like I say, nothing going on in terms of rain. However, our big weather player is to our west and also to our north. We have a high pressure system that is set up, which is bringing that energy uh, to, from our east off of the Atlantic, bringing a, a little bit of moisture. A couple showers or two to our neighbors to the far, far east there on the coast. Really for us, our best, our best bet on weather is on rain is going to be coming in from the west here in the next day or two. When we get towards the end of the week, we start talking about Thursday and Friday, we start upping those rain chances just a little bit. Our water vapor imagery really shows this dry air, which is this orange and this red, really getting sandwiched in between this moisture here off of the east coast and going off into, coming off of the west uh, out of that cold front that's going to be making its next way here at the end of the week. For tomorrow, look at about 72 degrees with a mix of sun and clouds. It's going to be a little bit more windier than it was today. And going into our seven-day forecast, we're going to be seeing that those rain chances do start to go up there at the end of the week as that cold front starts making its way through, but Jay, go on and tell us about it, what's going on in the rest of the southeast. Thanks, Clay. As of right now, nothing, but again, we have that thunderstorms coming in, so later on throughout the week, we will see the thunderstorms bringing a lot of rain, but as of right now, our current conditions, 71 degrees in Tallahassee, with the nice moon in the background, 78 in Key West, and 77 in Miami. So overall, it's being nice, cool temperatures, but again, when that rain comes in, it will dry, um, cools off even more. But if you go to look at the wind speeds, New Orleans, you're getting 12 mile per hour winds. That's pretty high. And if Tallahassee, we're seeing 9, and Miami, you're seeing 15. So if you're going out boating, make sure you're prepared, because you don't want to be on the wires with the boat rocking with the wind. I mean, come on, now look here. Student small craft advisory, light to moderate chop, weighs 3 to 4 feet. That is not something you want to be out boating for. If you're going to go out, you make sure you are um, safe and aware of the waves. When we look at the water vapor, nothing much to talk about, but again, we see how the cold front still bringing its way out, and we have another one that will soon make its way in to the southeast, so make sure you are ready for that. As we look at sign radar, like I said before, that cold, um, the cold front and the thunderstorms will be making our way in later on throughout the week, but as of right now, there's nothing really to say for our area and the rest of the southeast. You do have some thunderstorms off in Orlando and some in Miami, but that will start making its way out, and these thunderstorms are making its way in later on in the week. As we look at the future cast, when we send it into motion, as of right now, there will be nothing to talk about in the southeast except for Orlando and Miami with those thunderstorms. But when we advance it even further, that thunderstorms are making its way into the southeast, bringing a lot more moisture and a lot more cloud cover. So it will start cooling us off when we hit Friday and Saturday. And when we see look at tonight's temperatures, it will be 50 degrees in Tallahassee, 66 in Orlando, 75 in Miami, and 77 in Key West. But if you're in T um, Tupelo, 47 in Atlanta, you're sitting at 40 degrees. Make sure you stay bundled up if you're in the Atlanta area. And when you look at um, tomorrow's forecast, it will be nice all across the southeast, 72 in Tallahassee, so, um, 84 in Orlando. But if you're in Key West and Miami, you will be seeing those thunderstorms later on, so make sure you have the umbrellas and wrinkles handy. Now let's send it back to the desk with Tyler and Troy. Alrighty, thank you, Jay. And those temperatures are looking quite toasty, if I do say so myself. Doesn't feel too much like November, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll see tomorrow how it <laughs> feels. But we're going to focus on the tropics, and we're going to talk a little bit about Sonia. Yeah, believe it or not, it's still hurricane season oh, for the Atlantic, which has pretty much been you know, dormant Dead. all yes, season exactly long. Right. Eastern Pacific, well, we've seen a little more activity here, but we have some moisture that is going into the central plains from a tropical system. Yes, and some of the moisture from Sonia is going to combine with the not a middle latitude sources that's currently over the Rockies, and together they're going to combine to produce a lot of 
rainfall across the plains region. Yeah, it could be some locally blinding rain, some localized areas of flash flooding as well, but I don't think it'll be the worst outbreak that they've seen, but certainly could cause some travel headaches. Yes, turn around, don't drown, folks. Remember Always. that phrase where you're encountering any, you know, flood and flood indeed. But we're going to take it to Ryan with your <laughs> national. And Ryan, uh, hopefully you don't run any flood anytime soon. Lots to talk about around the country. Here is our temperature current condition map. We've got a whole lot going on. Warmer conditions across the east compared to the uh, our friends in the Pacific Northwest. But relatively speaking, it was pretty cool today across the entire eastern part of the country. 69 right now in New Orleans, 57 in Atlanta, 63 in Memphis. Cloudy conditions apart across the center part of the country. But these temperatures are going to warm up gradually in advance of our next frontal system now making its way across the center of the country. Here's those temperature changes ac across the past 24 hours. Uh, a little warmer in the eastern part of the country as opposed to the west where we've got a digging air mass of cooled air behind our next frontal system that's moving through the center part of the country. 17 degrees colder in Denver right now than it was 24 hours yesterday. A system beginning to get itself together across the Colorado Rockies and center part of the country. And here on our national satellite and radar, we've got moisture feeding up from tropical storm Sonia across parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and into Arkansas. This is all moisture in advance of a system that's really getting itself wound up across the Colorado Rockies. These cloudiness, uh, areas of cloudiness across Colorado stretching across the high plains. This is going to be our next big system across the United States, dumping snow from Nebraska all the way up to the Twin Cities. And we'll zoom in for you. We've got some rain showers moving through the northern high plains. Rain, heavy showers and thunderstorms moving through Minneapolis, St. Paul. A wet commute for you there. This is just the first round of weather for this part of the country. Residual showers across the Arrowhead, but we're going to expect snow, 5 to 8 inches of snow across Nebraska into South Dakota and potentially 2 to 4 inches for Minneapolis, St. Paul. Their first snow of the season. Moving down the line, we've got rain showers extending from the Dallas Metroplex into Little Rock and cloudiness all the way around. The East Coast looking good with a ridge of high pressure from the Boss Wash Corridor, corridor down to Tallahassee. The southeast is going to stay high and dry. Winter weather advisories from the High Plains extending into the Twin Cities. Airports looking pretty decent. Washington, D.C. had a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, yeah, to delay. <laughs> Uh, but we're looking green lights all the way around if you're traveling around the country. <laughs> Temperatures tonight. We've got uh, cool conditions for you tonight. 19 degrees in Billings. How's that for you? Tomorrow's forecast looks a little warmer across the eastern part of the country. And now for Troy, we're going to take, no, Daphne, she's going to take a look. I'm just all over the place tonight, guys. Here's Daphne with more weather. Well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, you mentioned the rain, and that is not over us as of now. You can see we're crystal clear all through the Panhandle Big Bend region. You see where the rain is here. It's a cold front to our west. It's not going to be making way to, to us at least until Thursday. Uh, so we are dry as of now. You can see that with our water vapor imagery here. Um, moisture hanging out to, in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You can see the orange and the lighter colors are indicative of that dry and then the grays and the whites are where the clouds and moisture is at. Okay, so today's almanac by the number. You woke up to 52 degrees here, uh, right there on average, 51, and warming up only to 75 degrees. So we're right there on average, and we're going to continue to see those numbers throughout the week here. In fact, right now, 71 degrees is what you're sitting down to. Uh, clear skies, and look at that, 53% humidity. Uh, so rather comfortable in terms of moisture, and we're going to see that over the next couple of days here. Okay, so current temperatures by the numbers, we're talking comfortable, 71 degrees in Tallahassee and checking in at 74 along the coast and 69 for you uh, in the cool spot at Carabao. Not complaining with these numbers. In fact, we're going to put our future cast into motion here. Tonight, we're going to get down uh, as the night progresses. We're talking in the 50s here in Tallahassee and you can see the warm spot there in South Florida, 81 degrees. Uh, but we are right there on average, and we're going to continue to see these numbers over the next couple of days here. All right, so winds, this is the main story here. We have the winds coming from the northeast. That's kind of fueling the cooler and the drier, uh, and then it's going to, that's giving us the um, partial cloud cover with that moisture coming off of the Atlantic. All right, so tonight's forecast, if you have the plans to take it outdoors, not a bad date night here. 50 degrees is what we're talking, crisp and cool. 
a little breezy. So if you have those plans, you want to keep that in mind. But nothing in terms of rainfall for you. In fact, no rainfall tomorrow either. We're talking 72 degrees right there on average, a lot like today. And then we do have that breeze again come tomorrow time. Uh, so rather comfortable conditions all across the board here. In fact, comfortable come Tuesday. We have a slight chance for rain on Wednesday. And then Thursday is the greatest chance for rain as we have that cold front come through. But then look on Friday, we have the sunshine in the forecast. And I'm loving the sunshine. What do you think about the sunshine, Jay? I love the sunshine and the weather we're having in Tallahassee. I mean, you do. come on, look at this. Volleyball, I see people playing volleyball, a lot of people playing, and some tennis. I love myself some tennis as you well. You love some tennis. Well, you, see, you know, when the weather is nice, I feel like everyone's in such a good mood, and the yes. sunshine really affects your mood. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I sometimes see so many smiles on campus. Uh -huh. Well, now that kind of cooler temperatures are in the forecast, everyone's talking about getting colder and um with those colder temperatures, people associate those colder temperatures with the uh, flu. Yes, I've got myself gotten sick in the past because of the cold temperatures that came in uh -huh. in, in Florida. Well, it's, a lot of people think it's the colder temperatures that are actually causing people to get sick, but that's not the case according to a study uh, in New York. Yes, I'm hearing that. Yeah, well, it's actually people tend to stay indoors in a closed system when there's cooler temperatures and when you have an extended stay with the more people indoors there's more of a chance for spreading the bacteria and the viruses and yes all and that. all the bad diseases that we none of us wants to get but now for more of our story let's send out to Troy okay all right well we're gonna I'm gonna pretend to be Troy I was with Troy a few minutes ago but we're gonna take a look around Florida now and show you what's going on we do have some showers okay, tell me what's going in on the uh, eastern side of the state but let's show you the beauty that we have here I almost flipped the remote on the ground but you can see uh, St. George Island mostly clear skies with temperatures in the low 70s and uh, I think this was a little bit earlier today because now it's starting to get dark out there right now. The big story around the state is the wind with an east to northeasterly wind flow. 10, 20 mile per hour sustained winds and gusts were much higher. 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts. In fact, right now in Jacksonville, 24 mile per hour wind gusts. I saw 35 mile per hour wind gusts in St. Augustine at this hour. So really gusty winds, a little bit lower in Tampa today, but the Sunshine Skyway Bridge was actually on alert yesterday because of uh, high winds gusting over 40 miles an hour and that uh, causes the highway patrol to advise travelers to stay off the bridges over in Tampa but again with this wind it causes an issue for boating so if you're going boating on uh, Tuesday around here northeasterly winds 20 knots so it's going to be breezy even up here in the Big Bend waves about three to four feet with a small craft advisory uh, so not a good idea to take the small craft out it could flip uh, so you're going to want to be careful with that. Satellite and radar picture around the state because of the northeasterly wind. This is cold port number two, the clouds and the rain. So we also, in addition to the waves uh, at the beaches, we have lots of clouds and rain showers coming offshore. And you can see that here in the satellite picture. These dark gray color clouds indicate low clouds. And so it's causing a bit of a cooler temperature. Uh, gradient across the state today. 71 in Orlando, 74 degrees in Tampa. Of course, we're now dark with that time change. Uh, no more sun at this time of the day. The sunset at about a quarter to six in many portions of the state. Dew point, as you can see, in the upper 50s, a little drier uh, up toward our way, but with that more pronounced easterly flow, it's a little bit stickier, if you will across South Florida. But around here, we're starting to see a few clouds sneak into our region uh, from that easterly wind coming off the Atlantic. You can see especially across uh, Jefferson County and Madison County, and some of that may sneak into our area for tonight. But you can see the showers are really pronounced just to our east over on the first coast, Daytona Beach up to Jacksonville, including St. Augustine. You got quite a bit of showers. Also down here toward the Space and Treasure Coast, Stewart, down toward a Jupiter, you're seeing some rain as well. And finally, South Florida, we also have more rain here as well. Miami and Broward County, uh, you're seeing some showers too because, again, this easterly flow, that's really not going to be letting up anytime soon. And so we're going to keep the rain chances in the forecast tonight and into tomorrow as well. Highs will still warm up, though, into the mid to upper 80s. So that's all for your uh, Florida weather. Let's go ahead and 
take a look at what's going on around Florida now with Troy. All right, thank you. I'm finally here. Apparently, I'm quite popular among my colleagues, Matt. They just keep calling my name, but I'm finally here, folks. But we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Winter weather. I know we're a month away from winter, but hey, it's not too early to talk about it. And we're going to start off by showing you this lovely graphics taken by our former student meteorologist, who is now chief meteorologist in Atlanta, Montana, Austin Winfield. And it looks that he sent us a lovely FSU snow, you know, wrote it in letters on his top of his car. So we want to thank Austin for that, and we hope that he's doing very well up in Montana. But in the meantime, we're going to look at what's going on currently across the United States. And you see where the cold is confined to the northwest. 41 degrees for current temperature in Denver, 34 degrees in Billings, Montana. So they're floating around with the freezing mark. And to illustrate just how much things have changed over the past 24 hours, just to give you an idea of the drastic change in temperature, you see this little trough of low pressure right here associated with the cold front. That's where the cold temperatures are confined to. 17 degree change in our temperature in Denver. So it just really just illustrates how cold it's, it's been getting over the northwest. But in the meantime, we're going to, we have some watches and warnings for you. Where you see these warnings in purple is indicated by winter weather advisories. And that means that there's a possibility of just seeing some snow showers over the next 24 hours. So if you're just going around, you know, skiing or traveling along I-90, really just be on the lookout for any inclement weather. You know, if you're traveling, you know, see snow in the roads, just don't be careful and don't slip on it because that can be very dangerous. But satellite and radar, again, there's that low pressure system across the middle of the country and behind that, that northwest flow is drawn in that air from Canada and that has allowed some moisture to work in the upper levels of the atmosphere and cause some snow. And we're going to show you just where that snow is confined in the northwest, Billings, Montana. A little bit of snow showers popping around there. So if you're going around the Rockies, you know, especially the higher the mountains go, the more chances for higher chances of snowfall, more accumulation of snowfall. So really, if you're skiing or just hiking in the mountains, just be extra careful when you're going in the mountains. And a little bit further south, just shifting it down towards the Four Quarters region, there's that little snow's popping up around the western sections of Colorado into Utah. So really, nothing significant going in the meantime. So really, all in all, just snow showers is really the main story. And just zooming out once again, there's that low pressure system in the middle of the country that's been responsible for the snow, winter-like weather in the Northwest. So hopefully, if you're, if you're loving winter, you know, you're going to love it even more because tonight's forecast, very bone chilling temperatures across the Rockies, 26 degrees, Endeavor, 19 degrees in Billings, Montana. And tomorrow, more coldness is in store for us, 39 degrees in Denver and 37 degrees in Salt Lake City. So back to the desk. Daphne J, do you like cold weather? Troy, I like the cold weather, but I like your terminology floating around. Yes, the cold weather is definitely bringing <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of good, well, much needed snow for the people there. Yeah, well, floating around. Speaking of that, we have something floating around in Chicago today. Yes, supposedly they recorded an earthquake that wasn't Mother Nature, but, but man-made, indeed. Yeah, well, it was uh, reported a 3.2 earthquake at 1235 today uh, in western Chicago. And uh, they're saying that this was man-made, so not your typical earthquake. Yes, Hanson Materials in um, suburban Illinois um, was responsible for the quarry earthquake that we had. And what that means is a shot, they were drilling into um, limestone materials that uh, supposedly caused the blast that recorded in the earthquake. So that was, okay, very, well, inter that yeah. was very interesting weather, but... We don't always have that, so... Yeah, but let's send it out to Zach with our final local for tonight. Hey, Jay and Daphne, excuse me about that, but... Uh, Forgot who was at the desk there for a second, but let's look at your current winds. This is what's been the main story today and what's going to continue for a little more, that northeasterly to easterly flow. A lot of people have been talking about this today all through the show. There's that northeasterly 9 miles per hour in Tallahassee. Look at your current temperatures across the board. 71 in Tallahassee, 64 in Quincy. 66 in Bainbridge, those temperatures a lot lower than they have been recently. And that's because the sun is setting a lot earlier now. We reset our clocks this weekend. Hopefully you guys didn't forget about that. I actually forgot about it earlier until today. I was like, oh no, but don't worry, I, I reset mine. It's 71 currently and clear, 53 degrees with that dew point. We aren't seeing any of those rain showers like the rest of Florida. And that's evident on our satellite and radar. A few of those 
clouds right there, but nothing on the radar to really talk about, which is a nice thing for all of those uh, students going to classes today. But as we zoom out from locally, there's the next cold front. There's the next system that we'll actually be talking about later on. That system's going to slowly migrate its way over, and we'll be looking at those rain chances increasing mid to late week. So we'll be talking about that later on. As we actually set this into motion, here's our future cast. Those showers are persisting from that northeasterly to easterly flow. Uh, showers in Tallahassee not really affecting us right now. But as we set this further into motion, we will see actually uh, more showers moving in through Thursday. Tonight, though, 50 degrees, a few clouds. But it's going to be a beautiful, crisp night. I'm looking forward to it. If you guys want to go out and throw a football on Landis or just enjoy the night, it's definitely one of those nights that you're going to want to do it. And those nights are going to persist for quite a while. But tomorrow, it's looking nice as well. 72, a mix of sun and clouds. Quite windy, very much kind of like what we saw today. Those winds, again, coming out of the east-northeast. 15 miles per hour, so very similar to what we saw today in that seven-day forecast as I step out of the way. Those temperatures are rebounding to the 80s, but there's that rain chance we're talking about on Thursday before that cold front moves out. And then the clouds return for the weekend into early next week with a possible new system on its way. But we're going to send it back to the desk with Jay and Daphne. Thank you, Zach, and let's talk about our Saturday game. That we played against UM. That was, that was an awesome game. Yes, indeed. I went to the game myself, and it was packed. Electric atmosphere. Every single seat in that stadium was full. And it was well-deserved. When yeah. Hurricanes took on the Seminoles, the, Hurricanes got their, the undefeated streak got fizzled out. Yeah, the score was 41 to 14, and just that energy was incredible. I, and something you, you only see once in a season. That was incredible game. Yeah, and so hurricane season was over. Yes. And that was a great finish as we, uh, the hurricanes. Undefeated streak yeah. was destroyed. No pun intended. No, none at all. <laughs> well, here's a picture that we have uh, of the sky during game day on Saturday. You can see only a couple clouds out there. Uh, and there's our student meteorologist. Ryan Smithies, and uh, they're out there with the sign and supporting the end of hurricane season. Yes, but when we take a look at our seven-day forecast, we see a few rain showers coming in on Wednesday and Thursday and on Saturday. Uh, looks like sunshine is the main uh, go-getter on Friday, so that's your best chance for outdoor plans. Yes, and usually my best plan, but if you like us on, on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter and on live stream where we are streaming at the moment right now. You just can't get away from us. Nope. Well, you can always keep up with us online or on live stream, so, yeah. Yes, as we take a look at our, we want the number oh. one spot against Alabama, <laughs> and hopefully we get to play them um, in the BCS championship. But that'll be it for tonight, and we will see you.